Welcome to our presentation on how to expand your practice with a connected client experience. My name is Lee Reams II. I am founder and CEO of County Works Pro. I've been working with independent tax and accounting professionals for over 20 years, first through my company Image One, which I sold a little over 10 years ago to focus on the digital side. So we're excited to talk about today's topic, um, the user experience and understanding kind of what has changed in the connected economy. So the modern accounting firm has changed more in the last 12 months than the last 24 years combined. And it isn't just showing any sign of slowing down. In the old world, it was about face-to-face -face client experiences and billing for one-time services. Clients have changed and that they have a new set of expectations from their accountant, CPA, and enrolled agent. They don't want static services. Uh, they want a connected client experience built around their ever-changing needs. They're looking for more efficient ways to engage with your firm. And having team members scattered across local and remote work only makes matters worse. So, but in the new era, it's about delivering more and more value through a connected client experience that enables you to deliver world-class client service, expand margins, and build a more profitable firm. And today we're gonna to talk about a lot of these topics. So let's get started. In today's webinar, we are going to address how the future will unfold. We will cover how your client experience has changed forever from the way prospects find you and choose to work with you. We will show you the insights on how to use technology to close prospects in a one call close. Uh, we will present a uh, how to use proposals uh, to present your uh, offering and how to price your services. And we'll teach you how to onboard clients digitally, improving client satisfaction while saving you time. So let's get started. Let's dig in. So the first issue I like to target or talk about is why change your mindset? Well, first of all, things have changed. The world has moved online. The pandemic only accelerated this. And more importantly, people are used to it. They, they, some of them actually like these new experiences. So you know, while some movement will be back to the old days, my best guess is that uh, a lot of this will be the new normal. So one of the issues I see is many tax and accounting pros are still stuck in their old paper-based ways. We recently did a survey of our client base and we found that 58% are still using a lot of paper-based processes. So the goal here is to kind of open your eyes, hopefully on how, you know, what changes have occurred, what are the four different facets of, a, of the life cycle of a client and what is the motivation for you to change the way you do things? So let's jump in. So consumers have changed. Consumers are used to convenience. They want things quickly. They're used to Apple. They're used to their buying products through Amazon, getting things quickly. They want frictionless and often digital experiences. And that's one thing uh, I talk about many times. I've been talking about it for years, actually, is how to take friction out of the buying process. And that is true for tax and accounting pros. And we'll talk about that in the get found sequence of how to establish your site and then convert to clients or prospects to clients. Um, a specific uh, stat that is helpful, I think, is 75% of consumers expect brands to make more of a contribution to their well-being and quality of life. And this is something that uh, you as a tax and accounting professional can look at as purely, hey, I, I can help you, you know, my client, have a better financial outcome whether that be through tax planning and saving you tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in, uh, on your tax bill, whether that be offering virtual CFO services and helping a startup establish in themselves, understand how to budget, how to do cash flow, uh, manage KPIs. These are things that will make a difference and consumers are expecting that now. And it's more and more as consumers' behaviors uh, change uh, they're expecting that kind of outcome. So you need to be an integral part of that. And you already are. But the question is, can you communicate that better through your marketing material and the way uh, you work with clients? And I think the answer is yes. The new landscape is digital. So from referrals to how new prospects find you, and even the onboard process, everything is gone digital. So technology creates a competitive advantage for savvy tax and accounting pros. And I think this is very important to people understand you know, focusing on a connected client experience requires a new way of thinking. So rather than just placing your focus on just existing clients, the connected economy is, is a, you know, kind of a live or die by creating a connected client experience before you even know about the client. So the formula lies in delivering multi-channel experiences and service that gets better and deeper over time. 
And what you're going to find is the, the early adopters are going to get better and better, more proficient at this. And they're going to have a leg up on you. You know, if you're going to be a late adapter to a lot of the digital experiences, um, what you're going to find is a lot of a lot of your competitors will be so far ahead of you, it'll be hard to catch up. And when I talk about competitive advantage and using technology, it's not just about your experience or your expertise anymore. It's not, you know, what you can do when someone chooses you, they're going to look at those, you know, can they can they help me? Do they have the experience? Can I trust them to do a good job? But they're also going to look at how easy is it to do business with you? Is it easy to communicate with you? Is it easy to share documents with you? Are you able to interview clients digitally, you know, uh, in a virtual format? So those are the kind of things that are starting to become difference makers. And you have a lot of new technology enabled companies coming after your business, whether you look at Intuit Live, Pilots product, um, there's a bunch of them out there. The reality is they are getting clients. And in reality, they are a competitor of yours. So I think with using technology or independent tax and accounting bureaus, starting to use technology, I think you'll be much more successful. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to define what a user experience is. Um, you know, as a software developer, we talk UX, UI, user interface, user experience all the time. But I'm just going to, I went to Oxford and we let's just define it before we get in here. So user experience is the overall experience of a person using a product or a service, right? Um, such as a website or computer application, especially in terms of how easy or pleasing it is to use. And I think that's one thing that a lot of tax and accounting pros don't look at when they look at their own relationship with their clients, you know? So how easy do you make it? Do you make it pleasing? Do you take that friction out when a client's trying to work with you? And we're gonna start at the top of the funnel. So from a prospect, how they find you, then decide whether or not they wanna work with you. Then once they start working with you, what is that process? What is that user experience? And then once an engagement is done, how do you uh, create client loyalty? So that's the purpose of this webcast. So I'm gonna start with a lot of, and I'll ask a lot of questions because I want everyone to kind of look in the mirror during this presentation, but ask yourself, do you make it hard for clients or prospects to contact you? Is your website clunky or slow, outdated? Um, is it secure, right? Do you use storytelling metaphors in your marketing material? I think that is a very important element of the firms that are doing very well and converting digitally. They understand that they need to use narratives to talk to clients, whether they're going after a specific vertical or niche, they need to tell a story that connects with their prospects and makes them feel like, hey, I may not even know I had this pain point, but by reading your marketing material, I'm like, wow, I could have a better outcome. And we'll talk about that as we go through this presentation. So important three questions to start with. There's a couple more. Do you pre-sell the prospects with case studies? testimonials, five-star reviews. And what do we mean by that? So in the digital age, people are Googling about you. They're going to then basically interact with your brand without you even knowing it. And so what do they see there? Are they getting a great first impression? Does the marketing material you're using, what we call pre-sell, you know, some people call this social proof. Um, you know, these are things that will back up what you were saying in your marketing material and make it easier that when they actually do reach out or decide to work with you, that they're already pre-sold, okay? And it's the same thing as also building the amount of trust they have with you. Um, I think that's important because when you start working with any new uh, client, the goal is that they trust you. And trust is built over time, but if your marketing material and this the get found stage is effective enough, and you're gonna pre-sell a lot of these people. Are you recognized as an expert in your field? And you may sit there and go, well, of course I'm an expert in my field. I know I'm you know, smarter and better than anybody, but that's not necessarily the way the game is played anymore. You know, So it's now, it's more like high school. It's, are you recognized by social media, by uh, journalists, by your peers as being an expert in your field? And these are things that you need to use to promote your practice. Um, and it's very important to become your own mini influencer, so to speak. So uh, I think that's important. Sometimes people, especially in this industry or profession, you know, are more humble and are not always out there. But the reality is you have to be to compete uh, competitively. So do you make it easy for prospects and clients to work with you? And these are things like, is your phone number on your website? Do you make it easy for them to contact you? Um, are you showing your personality and your, your marketing material? And these are things that we'll talk about a little bit more in the Get Found stage. So let's start at the beginning. So what are the four phases of the client life cycle? Um, 
every pro should focus on these four uh, because they're each uh, important in their own ways. And we, we're going to start at the beginning. So, you know, getting found, how do I establish a digital footprint? Then all of a sudden someone has found my brand. They're starting to engage with my brand online. How do I now nurture them to convert them? And then now they've made that purchase. They've started to work with me. They've engaged me. What is that client engagement and onboarding process like? What is that user experience like? And then now they've completed it. You've done a great job. They're, they're you know, really happy. Are you collecting then five-star reviews? Are you getting testimonials? Are you able then to build client loyalty to create ambassadors that these people are now spreading the word about your firm and how well you help them? Um, and this, in addition, in the client loyalty phase is how you'll start understanding how to use very happy clients to start upselling to you know, products. Maybe a tax prep client becomes a tax planning uh, client. And instead of just paying you $1,000 a year for a tax return, they're spending $5,000, $7,000, whatever. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that you can identify, R&D tax credits, virtual CFO, et cetera. So all four of these are part of what I call the uh, four phases of the client lifecycle. And we're going to go through each one in detail through this webinar. So let's uh, do it in a graph mode. We're going to talk at the top of the funnel. Top of the funnel brings people into your brand. They, they learn about you. They experience your brand. If they're happy, they convert to clients. At that point, they then you go into the manage clients mode. That's where you're doing the actual work and delivering the product or services. And then when they are done, hopefully they are very happy. Uh, and you then go into the create client loyalty phase, which they then start referring more and more clients to you. So basic graph, but this is kind of the way it works. So we're going to start with getting found and let's go into the details. So step one, you need to make your practice familiar to your target audience by getting your brand out there, right? So name recognition and familiarity will help you attract more prospects and familiarity actually helps brands that are maybe not as competitive as others or do as good of a job to actually outbeat them and outcompete them. So you have to get your brand out there. Um, the more the recognition there is, if a referral occurs, oh yeah, I've heard of them. It makes it easier for them to decide to contact you, right? So spread the word however you can. And when we talk about this, we're gonna get into uh, a lot of things. Some people call it selling the invisible. How do you start a relationship? Um, but it's important that the first time the prospects encounters your brand, uh, they're, they're seeing an incredible experience. Like your first impression is a great one. And you really need to start looking at this at every stage, every contact point. Every, and we, a lot of times we call it digital contact points, but we'll get into it a little bit more. But this is from your receptionist. This is how you follow up on inbound leads from email responses. Um, you know, you name it. Um, when you're selling a service, you're selling a relationship. And these are all kind of, variables on how you establish a strong relationship. Humans, you know, they they are emotional. They want to feel valued. They want to feel like they like you. Um, and you got to realize that not every buyer comes in at the intent stage. So when I say that, meaning not everyone's calling you and they already know they have a problem. They want to hire an accountant. They want to hire a specific accountant that works with dentists, for example. That's an intent buyer. Well, it'd be great if everyone comes in at that stage uh, the reality is there's not that many at that any given moment, right? So if you want to broaden your funnel, you need to start creating contact, content and contact with people that are different areas of the funnel, meaning they, are, they may not be aware they have a problem yet. They then are in the consideration phase. Uh, they're in the research phase. So these are all the things that are happening and you want to make your brand be present that when they're looking, if they're at the research phase, or if they're trying to figure out they have a problem, they're engaging your content during that. So it's important to understand that. A stat here, 93% of consumers use the internet to find a local business in the last year with 34% searching every day. So think about that. They're obviously using the internet to decide if they're you know, hiring a tax accountant and there's still traditional referrals still happens. But the reality is, you know, we, we see uh, stats that say up to 50% don't call the referred partner after they Google the brand name and they don't like what they see. So you have to understand that the old way, the referrals by themselves is not something you can rely on anymore. So a first impression could be a referral from a colleague, a friend, family member. 
a blog article. If you're writing about life events, there's a lot of different ways um, that you can uh, people can find you through your blog. Social media posts. A lot of people spend you know multiple hours of time on social media every week and every day. They're picking up their phone. Uh, the social media sites are logged into more often than anything else. Um, web searches. So this is what gets into organic search. What that's why it's important to have a well-built, fast, responsive website. And review sites. Review sites are things like TaxBuzz, CountingWorks, Google. Google My Business is changing their name. Yelp, you know, Thumbtack. These are those kind of things. So it's important to understand there are different areas or different touch points where people can find you and engage with your brand. 53.3% of all website traffic comes from organic search. So realize when people talk about search engine optimization, and it's a service we offer through CountingWorks Pro to our partners, um, and we have a couple different programs uh, that, that go more on to like marketing concierge versus just managing um, keywords and, and, and optimizing sites. But the reality is if you are missing this element, you're missing 50% of the opportunities purely because you have not invested in your digital footprint. So understand that um, organic search is the key to any successful practice. And more importantly, it's evergreen, meaning that once you establish it, it builds upon itself year after year after year. And we find that our VIPs who've been with us the longest actually rank for more keywords than anyone else. So it's something that once you establish it, you don't wanna lose it. And it keeps delivering year after year after year. So really important, 60% of marketers say that inbound, which means SEO, blog content, videos, podcasts, et cetera, is their highest quality source of leads. Now think about that. They've engaged with your brand whether it be a specific keyword search or they read one of your articles and they, they find found you impressive, you know, you, they liked your expertise that you were sharing. And 60% of marketers are saying, hey, these are the highest quality source of our leads. So really important to understand that element. So going back to getting found. So does what they find here give an exceptional first impression? And what we were talking about were those five different items, but there's many other places uh, that people can find you, but think about that. You know, would you hire you based on what you see? Now think, you know, what would you like to, do? you know, if you were looking for any product, you're probably reading reviews. You're, you're kind of seeing, you know, are there some case studies or they worked with people like me and what were their results? Now think about that. That makes the pre-sale a lot easier process, right? So their, their user, the prospect is looking at this going, wow, you know what? This person has already worked with people like me and look at these results. And what this does is improves, improves the perceived value of what you're offering. And what you're gonna find is this allows you to get pricing. Um, you'll be able to get premium pricing. You'll be able to sell your services for more because the expectation is, wow, this person knows more than the generalist, more than the, you know, your competition, purely because you pre-sold them. You've used marketing, storytelling, reviews, these case studies to pre-sell your prospect. So we call this, and there's books written about it, but keys to selling the invisible. So everyone in your practice is responsible for marketing. And think about that. Every engagement someone has with you, whether that be on your Facebook page, whether that be a call into your receptionist, whether that be the, the lobby experience, all of that is part of uh, marketing basically. And this every touch point in your client experience is important. So you don't even the, your invoicing, how you do your proposals, how you bring your intake forms, this is all important things. So realize from a marketing standpoint on the getting found point, if someone comes in through referral, what is that experience gonna be like? Um, do you make it easy for people to refer you on social? Meaning if you don't have social accounts, set up and someone types in your name in Facebook, they can actually pull up your, your Facebook page and forward it to someone directly through there. So if you're missing those elements, you're not giving what I would call a, a very favorable experience, right? So you wanna make that great first impression. So ask yourself, how does your receptionist answer the phone? How do you respond to inquiries? How quickly do you respond? Harvard did a big business study and I think it was if you respond within five minutes, you're like you know 20 times more likely to close somebody. It's, it's incredible. And if you think about it from your own experience, people stop searching. If they get instant, you know, if they if they engage a brand quickly, 
they're not going to keep looking for other brands. They don't want, they, they want to, you know, get things done quickly. They like convenience, right? Does your website talk to your prospect as a human? And a lot of times in the tax and accounting space, one of the things I find is, you know, many won't even show their bio, write their bios. They won't show their pictures. They won't show pictures of staff. Um, you know, some of our most successful clients, I'll, I'll give an example, murphy3.com. They have, they show their personality everywhere. They show heavy photos of the, the staff, the partners. There's a personality there. It's creating a human connection. This is what's going to make great relationships. So use it when you're getting found because Google looks at the user experience when they rank your website. And what do I mean by that? When they come to a site as a blog, is there, are they not engaging it? Are they not going into multiple pages on your site? Basically, if you have a high bounce rate where people go to your homepage and bounce and leave, that's going to hurt your overall ranking. So Google looks at that because that's some of the signals they use to say, hey, are people we, we're sending to this brand having a good experience? Are they spending time there? And if they are, that means that the searcher and the search criteria is matching, and we're going to send more and more people there. So that's what I mean. Does your website talk to your prospect as a human? Does your website address their pain points? Or are you just listening to a bunch of designations or talking in accountant speak? You know, you need to look at um, what are their pain points? How do I resolve them and make your life better, right? Use narratives, use storytelling to do this. Do you make it easy to be contacted? A lot of times we'll see way too many calls to action or no calls to action. So buttons, you know, a free discovery call, you make something simple, you get them on your calendar, you use our one call close process, we have a, a separate webcast, if you Google or go to County Works Pro, and go to our uh, webinars, you'll find the one call close, we talk about it a little bit in this presentation, but I highly recommend understanding how you can use a 15 minute call to qualify people. And that's what I mean by do you make it easy to be contacted, easy to engage your firm, make your firm look credible, and most importantly, human. Use SSL security on your websites. You know, make you make yourself feel trustworthy. Okay, and use those photos. Huge point. Are you active where your prospects hang out? And I know right away. I hate social media. I hate Facebook. I hate LinkedIn. Um, the reality is, people are there, and you need to be there. If people are spending most of their time there, and you, you don't necessarily have to be overboard on engaging. We have a, a system in place for our County Works Pro clients where we will connect to their social media sites and post, we'll share curated content. So like, you know, breaking tax news, what's going on with the uh, tax policy changes, we'll share their blog articles, which creates a lot of inbound traffic. But what we've noticed is that people with social media posting on versus off, they have a 10% boost in the amount of traffic they get to their site, to their brand. So think about that. They're already, that's a 10% and that's on average a 10% more likely or 10% more traffic than their competition that is not on social. And that doesn't even include the engagement that's going on in the actual social media sites themselves. So is your website and digital footprint optimized to get found by search engines? So meaning, do you have the right meta titles and descriptions? Are you writing content that will rank for the type of things, queries that your prospects are using? You know, a lot of times you, you just put up a website in the DIY function, um, you have no idea how to set it up. I mean, it's just like doing your own taxes, you know, search engine optimization, you need professionals. Um, you know, we know what works. We know we've been doing it for years. And with a, a large client base, you can kind of see who's outranking others. So uh, a lot of good information there, but things you need to ask yourself. So the goal of your marketing program is to be part of the conversation. You know, by the time the prospect engages, they have spent the time researching your competitors, reading reviews, looking at your website, et cetera. And I usually give this kind of scenario or a metaphor. It's if you're not getting inbound calls right now, what's happening is e either A, your website and your digital footprint is not ranking well, or when they land there, they don't like what they see. It's not that the traffic's not there. There's lots of opportunities every day um, online to find new clients, high paying clients, not just you know price uh, shoppers. So it, it, a lot of this process is happening right now, whether you like it or not, or know it or not, okay? So important thing to, to think about. So if you're not getting calls now, it's because you are not showing on Google and social sites, or they do not like what they find. I'm just gonna reiterate this. I'm repeating what I said. It's very important to think about. So keep in mind, more than 70% of small business websites do not use call to action buttons. 
I mentioned this before, and that's crazy. You get someone to your site. Now, the whole idea here is to, to get them to the next level. So it's to take you to engage with your brand. So what is that? It could be a buy now button. It could be a free discovery call. It could be sign up for my newsletter. It could be download a white paper. These are all calls to action. You want them to be clear, okay? People form 75% of their judgment on a website's credibility purely on its looks. I mean, think about that. So if you have a professional site, a site with your photo and you know personality, nice color schemes, simple stories, narratives that speak to people, they're going to judge your credibility and trust you more, okay? 94% of people don't trust outdated websites. And I think it's even higher when you throw on, do you have SSL on your site or not? Um, and then 64% of users want to see contact information on a business's website. And that's all about, hey, is this person going to be responsive? Are they going to make it... If you're already making it hard to contact you through your web presence, you know, what, are the, what is that expectation when they actually become a client? You know, I'd be going, well, that's, <laughs> a CPA will never talk to me, you know, and that would be the issue. So those are the things you got to really keep in mind as we go. So the basics of getting found, it all starts with a well-built website that is easy for users to navigate. So think simple. The site, the websites and the businesses that are doing the best today in the modern age have the most simplistic stories, their narrative is spot on, they're speaking directly to pain points, and they're helping people that, that read this narrative maybe identify pain points they didn't even know they had, okay? That is what a well-built website does for you. If you just don't throw a website up and have the cousins you know, uh, build it because they can, it really needs to be thought out. You need to tell a story. Uh, we like to make a, a, a marketing position, own one thing and do it well. And don't worry about trying to say everything. Think of it as a political uh, campaign. Politicians will use one or two themes and they'll repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. You wanna do the same thing when you're, you're dealing with your website. Oh, I'm talking about human photos again. You need human photos to connect with visitors. Uh, you need to optimize the site for search engines. This means speed is really important. And while this might be boring to you and you might not think much, um, speed, and, and we've just spent literally a million dollars redoing our platform with speed, uh, the number one requirement. So how do we create a website that loads very quickly? And guess what? Google knows that people uh, that visit websites, they don't load quickly, they bounce. And they bounce fast. And it's a bad user experience. So Google will rank sites that are faster, more streamlined, better user experience, they're going to rank them higher, Okay. So it is a competitive advantage to invest in a fast site. Uh, and then, of course, maker calls to action, easy to understand. A lot of times we see the one or two extremes, so many calls to action, you have no idea where to go or none at all. So really, these are the basics of getting found. If you're doing these things, um, you're going to rank well. When it comes to some other items, I can't overemphasize the importance of reviews. Reviews, customers tell a better story they sell you better than any market material ever could. And they're gonna hit on items that you not necessarily would think of, but they're gonna, um, they're gonna connect with your prospect more. And they're gonna tell it in a narrative that, that they can connect with. So, you know, people that are in your industry as a prospect, they see, you know, uh, people that are working with, you're a dental CPA and you have a, you know, a bunch of uh, reviews from dentists and they're all saying the same thing, how responsive, how they've helped my business grow. These are important. So start, again, Google My Business is rebranding right now, uh, but Google, Yelp, TaxPose, CountyWorks, Thumbtack, whatever. Uh, we concentrate on Google My Business and TaxPose and CountyWorks first because they're targeted to the industry. Um, but what I wanted you to understand is get these reviews, get these five-star reviews. We have clients that we've helped attract hundreds and hundreds of reviews and they rank way better and more importantly, it helps you not only rank better to get found, but it helps you convert in the next stage in the next cycle. So just don't list services pain points. Let others tell your story, okay? So you want to convince prospects that the pain and consequences of not changing their ways will hurt their long-term financial results. That's when you've really hit your marketing message because not everyone's an intent buyer, as I said. So you want to basically, you're going to open the door to more prospects and more, more uh, conversations. So now we're going to move to the next life cycle part. So now you've found, you've been found, people are engaging your brand. So the question is, they hit a call to action. 
how do you nurture them to conversion? So you might be doing, um, you know, the ability to get people on your calendar through discovery calls and doing the one call close. You might be having people download white papers and then you're sending um, a series of emails and texts following up. They might be showcasing case studies or reviews, uh, some life event issues. They have links to your calendar to schedule that one call close discovery call, right? So you have to realize that humans don't always make the best choice when they're buying things, okay? Or even deciding whether to do, you know, do anything at all. I mean, the, the easy answer is I don't have to do anything, right? So they don't, humans don't always make the best choice. They want to minimize their risk and not make a bad choice, okay? So that's why the best brands, the best professionals aren't always getting the most business. So the role of your marketing material and nurture experience is to make your prospect trust that they are making the best decision. I think this is important to understand when we're talking about nurturing what that means. So most CPAs, EAs, and accountants think that their clients are buying expertise, but most prospects have a hard time evaluating expertise. And I'm gonna contradict myself at times uh, because a lot of times you're gonna showcase expertise um, when you're marketing to certain verticals, but the reality is let's pretend there's two CPAs and they both work with restaurants and they both have X number of years experience, blah, blah, blah. The CPA can say whatever they'd like, but as a user, you don't know what all these designations mean. You don't necessarily know just because they say it, they actually know what they're doing, right? But what a, what a prospect does know is do they feel valued? You know, they can tell if the relationship is good and if phone calls are returned, if people are responsive. And those are elements you're using during your user experience to help you convert people, okay? So now they're going from, okay, I think, the, you know, based on paper, this person has expertise, quote unquote, that I can use, I think would use, but it's the relationship is what's going to help them choose to work with you. So it's a very important uh, distinction that you, know, that you need to think about. So clients are experts at knowing if they feel valued, right? And this is even more important at the beginning of a relationship. So when we talk about this connected uh, user experience, we're trying to say, we're trying to connect in a human to human um, way with people when they find us. Now they're looking at our brand when we're trying to convert them, we're trying to continue that conversation and get it tighter, okay? That's why this is important. So evaluate your current nurture process if you have one. My guess is most people do not. Most pros don't have a plan in place. And that means, do you have an in-house plan that says when a inquiry comes in, where do they go? What are all their touch points? What is that flow of that prospect's experience, okay? So if a prospect wants to talk to you or get started, what is the process? Have you highlighted your social proof? You know, going to those case studies, testimonials, reviews throughout your marketing material. What is the perceived value of your service? So your prospect is making this perceived value in their head before they reach out to you, okay? And by nurturing them with information that helps increase that perceived value, that's where you get the power pricing. You know, you're going to get uh, the ability to charge more than your competition. So remember, your marketing will help increase what your clients will pay for your service. And this is why when accountants say to me, I don't need to market or I don't have time, um, it's like my you know, a go nuclear button. It's just, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, that's the most important part of having a healthy practice. And if you're using a great user experience, you're gonna get, you're gonna make more money. And most likely you can work with fewer clients. You can, you know, have more free time. Um, so hundred percent marketing is the key to a successful practice. So a practice using an unprofessional website or user experience will have a hard time getting a premium price. And that's just true. There's study after study that shows that. We've seen some of our best performers and they all have a great website, professional, human, a great story, um, and they're getting premium prices. They're growing, which leads me to continuing the nurturing to conversion. Remember, 88% of users are less likely to return to a website after a bad user experience. And that's where I say, you know, the, the SSL sec security is not built in. You don't have reCAPTCHA. Uh, you're not using, um, you know, the latest technology to streamline the experience. So you, know, you don't want people to drop from that because you, you just, you won't get that opportunity. So check your touch points. Have you taken friction out of the buying process? 
meaning how easy is it for prospects to go to a to buy okay or to contact you um so just look at you know this is another thing look in the mirror look at your um you know would you hire you would you if you came to the, your brand do you, can you go on your website and figure out how that person would connect with you and um i think that's important do you show photos of yourself your staff your office prominently through your you know throughout your site these are going to be important things uh, when building you're selling the invisible you're building a human relationship you need to be human okay and this is a, a big takeaway if you if you're still doing diy and you want to improve your user experience start putting photos of i don't it could be your pets it could be you i don't care you don't think you're that photogenic you know there's a we use a company called snapper i think it's with two p's and an r um, to do photo shoots really cost effective um but it's a great way to get some highly professional and even the you know the iphone 13's camera is so incredible you have no excuse not getting some nice photos on your sites now i want to talk about a little bit more of opportunities when you're converting so you've you've got you're, you've been found right so you're getting traffic to your website that's great but not all, not all that traffic occurs eight to five or when you're working and people work all hours now they're in different time zones they're doing you know they travel they're mobile there's all kinds of things so there is chatbot technology we have this for our vip clients and it's a way to capture leads and even answer simple questions off hours um we as counterworks pro we use intercom as a higher end solution um but the reality is um this helps you capture uh leads when you're not available okay so do you use nurture campaigns to follow up with these leads once you've captured them so realize not everyone is an intent buyer so when we talk about nurturing this is a sequence of contacts. So it could be one text message, it could be multiple text messages or a text and emails. Um, are you creating campaigns to different lead types? So meaning if you're looking for expat taxes, do you put them in a nurture sequence that hits them up that talks about how you help expat, you know, expats with their taxes, right? And this could be sharing some uh, case studies, uh, if it's a specific foreign country that they're working in, you know, different laws, those are just some different examples. Um, do you make it easy so that someone could uh, schedule a free discovery call with you from your website? Do you make your calendar available? Um, you know, we use teleaccount, we have our own uh, web based uh, virtual meeting tool, we integrate a lot of the our other tools, which I'll call like our document sharing, the ability to capture an ID, there's a lot of things, but Zoom obviously is another option. There's a bunch of tools, but are you using that? Are you using this technology to take the friction and help it make it easier for you to convert people, get them to stop searching and go to you to become a client? So I did, I mentioned the one call close um, webinar. I don't have time obviously in this presentation to go through all the details, but we did a separate webcast. I highly recommend again, Googling the one call close County Works Pro or go to County Works Pro. We have a section where we have our webinars and resources, or even go to YouTube and find this in the County Works Pro uh, YouTube account. But basically these are uh, the steps in a very simplified, quick way of just, just understanding what a one call close is. The object here is to qualify you and the client. So does that, per, that client wanna work with you? Do you wanna work with that client? So you want to do some homework before you talk to them, Google them. If it's a business, you want to understand who they know, what they do. They, you might have some friends in common and guess what? Or colleagues in common. That's part of building a rapport, right? You're making it personal now. You're not making it feel like someone's being sold. And when you're doing this, you start asking open-ended questions. And we give a list of open-ended questions, suggestions um, that you can utilize. And if you do this, you answer, you ask these, you know, two or three open-ended questions. All you're doing is sitting back and listening. And then basically you're listening and understanding what their needs are. And then you frame your narrative around their answers. And that's how you present your solutions to their problems. Um, we do suggest uh, at some point creating um, like a proposal tool, different ways to create proposals. There's a lot of software out there. We're developing our own uh, that will make it even more professional. That will be uh, kind of at the end of the conversion uh, discussion here. But um, you can use that proposal tool to help you under overcome objections. So present your solutions, have some common objections that they use, have it written down, have it so you are nailing the responses. Um, and once you do that, the biggest issue here is ask for the sale. We find most accountants are too shy or bashful to ask for the sale. And if you do this during a 15 to 30 minute call, 
you will be able to qualify clients. So you're working with those you want to work with. If they don't work out, if it doesn't seem like a match, you can refer them to others. And that br brings goodwill in itself. You'd be surprised how many people that you didn't work with actually refer you to others. Um, so th these are just the five things. Again, we have another webcast that I highly suggest you watch, but I'm gonna keep moving on. One of the things we're seeing more and more is people expect um, transparency and they wanna know what they're paying for. What am I getting for the price? And what we are finding is that uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. We have, again, our, our value pricing, packaging, we call it. Um, we have webinars on this uh, subject specifically. But the reality is you can market tax and accounting services um, on your website. It can be an e-commerce store. It can be something that you can use where they can uh, order it directly through the site, or it's a starting point for a conversation. And you can use this to, you know, here's three different packages and people will start choosing, do I want to be in the premium level? And they, in their mind, I want the premium. They're not looking at the price per se. They just know they want the premium level. And it's a way to get more money out of prospects than they probably would have spent in the beginning. And it's also an easier way for tax and accounting firms who don't like to be salesy to be able to get premium pricing. So are you using transparent value pricing packages? Um, the most important takeaway from this is don't charge by the hour, charge by your years, right? And if you start thinking that way, when you price your own services, if you start doing more monthly bundling or value pricing programs, you're going to find that you're going to have demand higher uh, prices and get more revenue. And again, you'll be able to do this without working with as many clients. So it's uh, very recommended. Um, you know, so the question is, can clients purchase tax and accounting services directly from your website today? If not, I suggest you test and iterate what might work. What's great about the internet, you find out very quickly, do people like things, what's working, what's not. You can test a few different ways. And then once you nail it, you scale it. That's when you can start throwing a lot of marketing dollars, um, you know, PPC campaigns, pay-per-click campaigns, uh, social media campaigns, things like that. So important to, to really think about. So that's kind of the nurturing to conversion. The, the, the last thing is I suggest as a sales assist using a proposal building tool because you're not always talking to people through a video meeting or over the phone. You might be doing a lot of uh, dialogue through texting, through um, uh, WhatsApp, you know, whatever you use. We see people using Facebook Messenger, but basically a proposal builder allows you to uh, do a lot of the one call close elements in one convenient package that they can look at on their leisure. And then they can come back and respond either approved, not approved, but it's really professional. It really kind of speaks value of what you're doing. They're like, wow, these guys really are legit. So I use a, a sample here from Pro, uh, Proposify. Um, we're working on our own version and it will come out in probably the next three to six months, but uh, something definitely to think about. And of course, have the ability to take and accept payment online. Um, you don't want to be chasing credit cards or bills or open invoices. Make it easier for you. Okay. So the basics of nurturing effectively are if you want to be a modern firm with a user experience that converts, you need to make it easy for prospects to say yes and to stop shopping for alternatives. All right. Step three, client engagement. So, okay, you close the deal. Now what? Are you going to go back to your normal paper-based workflows? Um, are you going to mail your engagement letter? Are you going to send your tax software's clunky tax organizer? Are you going to use non-secure email to collect documents? You know, are you using virtual interview technology like Zoom or Teleaccount? These are important things. This is about the client engagement. You want it, so now you have them sign off. You know, you don't want to then go back to your paper base. So, at minimum, you have your engagement letter, any uh, consents disclosures that they need to do, and more importantly, you know, there is a better way. So streamline your user experience. Use a professional client portal that brings it all together. Onboard digitally. Have a digital intake form. Have your digital disclosures signed off. When working remotely with clients, how are you verifying and collecting ID information? Our teleaccountant tool allows you to take a screen capture of the ID and the client's picture. Do you have a process for this client to complete the intake process themselves? The reality is you're going to start saving staff time and make it more convenient and organized in your client. So Definitely think about that in the client engagement side. Are you using digital organizers tailored to your clients? Um, the answer should be yes. 
And there's a lot of ways that you can make a simple organizer for simple tax returns. For example, if it's a business, you can collect EINs, the type of structure, who the key uh, employees are, contact information, things like that. You know, are you using workflow tools? We, uh, in, in talking about user experiences, we're not talking about the actual doing the work. So, you know, there's tools like Carbon, Canopy, Trello. We have over 30 workflows that we integrated for Trello that our, our application integrates with. And it just makes it easier. You know, what are the steps? What are my due date reminders? How do I follow up with missing information? Who's doing what? So are you doing um, digital workflows? So when you're delivering your work, is your delivery method communicating the value of your work? A lot of times we'll just see, you know, a, a non-secure email being sent and here's your tax return and here's your bill. No, let's, let's find a way to present that. In the old days you had embossed folders and printed material, but your, your client portal and that experience should be uh, professional as well. You know, so do you make it easy for clients to approve your work? You know, let's say you present it. Is this uh, approved or not? If there's changes, what are they? Does that, do you digitize that um, uh, experience? And that makes it just easier for the client, easier for you. And then from there, it makes it easier for you to get approval and, and actually get paid, right? So do you automate the collection of fees upon approval? Do you ask for a five-star review upon successful engagements? These are keys. These are things we do for our clients. They're definitely keys to a successful user experience. So I'm going to go back to the basics of effective client engagement. Digitize the process. You will make your clients feel valued and be able to charge a premium for your services. More importantly, you will save time and be able to scale your practice to new heights. We have clients using the same methods who now outsource some of this tax review uh, and accounting work. And basically, they use the, the partners as the relationship, that's the human connection. Um, they're kind of the point person, but then they use digital workflows and tools like we've been talking about today to get the actual work done. So they can use offshoring at times. It could be nearshore, but it doesn't necessarily have to be employees. You can find on-demand labor to do a lot of this work and then have a process to QC it. Um, but when you figure out this element, we have some of our biggest firms um, are doing this on scale, you can become a much bigger practice then you could just bill in for your own hours. Uh, that's kind of the thing we're trying to communicate with you here. Which means, leads me into my favorite part is client loyalty, often overlooked. I mentioned a survey that said only 28% of the tax and accounting pros are using a client newsletter, which is absurd to me. It's the easiest way to communicate your value, stay in constant contact, keep your brand in front of your clients. Client loyalty can be the easiest phase. However, it is sometimes overlooked. So stay present. That's what a newsletter does for you. Marketing and publicity are invaluable ways to let potential and former clients know that your practice is still around and viable, okay? Remind taxpayers and business owners of the great service they once received for you. It's more likely they're gonna repeat, reach out for other services, refer others, pay more for services. If you're doing upsell or cross-sell campaigns, they're more likely to respond to those. 86% of customers say an emotional connection where the representative would make them continue to do business with the company. Now think about that. That will keep your client retention rates much higher. And that's what we mean by having a human in a relationship. And it's, it's true. I mean, most accountants would agree they're friends with a lot of their clients. Their clients will look at them as friends. You know, they're telling, they're sharing very private details of their lives. So, you know, let's, let's make that an emotional connection. So make clients see their satisfaction as part of the larger pattern. And when we say what we mean by that is share your successes. You know, people want to feel like they're working with the best. You know, when you get new clients, announce them, new successes, awards, recognition uh, in the community, testimonials, and you know, growth in your business. These are milestones that make you know your current users feel like, hey, I made it just reinforces the choice they made. That helps them become um, more loyal and more, and you know, I would call better ambassadors of your brand. So what's the saying? Out of sight equals out of mind. A product continually reminds its buyers that it is good, okay? And that's what we're meaning. That's what I'm trying to communicate here. So as a tax and accounting professional, you can do the same you know, with modesty. You are not over aggressive salespeople, but we can still use the same strategies that work for others to build loyalty. So remember, your client touch points continue once a taxpayer or business becomes a client. And use these touch points to your advantage. Tax pros, you have many opportunities here. All right, so what do I mean by touch points? Things like tax policy changes. What's going on in Washington, D.C.? 
Um, you know, keep them up to date with breaking news, write articles about life events, divorces, getting married, starting a business, shutting a business down, selling a business, keep them up to date with due date reminders, make sure they don't miss something that they, they, they you know, in their busy lives might. Um, make clients feel appreciated, respected, and delighted. And study your touch points. You know, look in the mirror is what I was saying. Then improve each of them significantly to improve your overall client experience. Um, the goal of client loyalty is to build the foundation for upselling and generating more brand ambassadors. So what we mean by this is if you have 200 clients and you have super strong relationships with these clients, there's a very good opportunity that once you go into virtual CFO or higher end tax planning or R&D tax credits, that they're going to trust you much more easily to do that migration to a higher profit center than if you didn't have a very loyal client. And more importantly, as an ambassador, they're going to refer more people to you. Okay. So it's pretty cut and dry. This is what we're talking about when it comes to client loyalty. There's dramatic differences. And again, this is all marketing. So any accountant that tells you they don't market or don't need to market, um, they obviously are, are kind of lost in their ways. They're doing, um, you know, we'll call out, uh, outdated thinking. And this is kind of what we're, we're trying to communicate here is these four elements really will make a difference. So client loyalty can be built and automated by using the following tasks, solicit customer feedback, uh, celebrate your most loyal customers on uh, social media, share reviews, stay in contact with newsletters, uh, post daily on social media, ask for referrals, show gratitude, thank yous, uh, maintain a human connection, set up subscription services. These are things that people are gonna be paying you monthly. They're gonna be in more contact with you. They're gonna become more and more loyal. These are important elements. So the basics of effective client loyalty, happy clients are your best salespeople. Investing in the client loyalty stage will make current clients more receptive to utilizing and trusting you more. So final takeaways as I wrap this up, first impressions matter. Your business starts with the first impression, right? So how good is yours? Services are delivered by people and their success depends on the relationships of these people. What are your user experiences as they go through our four stages? You wanna optimize all four of them. You don't want any gaps. Um, you don't want any holes here. So time is valuable. And that's kind of the, the big thing that you gotta think about. No one likes getting, and this is from both point, your point of view and your consumer's point of view. The reality is getting taxes done, accounting, it's just not, not many people get excited about it. They're not like accountants and enjoy this. So you know, no one likes getting their taxes done or collecting documents for business planning. So how can you improve that client experience to respect the time of your buyer. Understand people is key. People can be frustrating, unpredictable, temperamental, and often irrational, right? They're emotional beings. But there are patterns to people if you just look closely enough. And if you're using these great user experiences, you're getting the best out of them. You're going to get the best type of results, the best type of emotions, the best type of reactions. So invest in your client experience. Occasionally, we hear from tax and accounting pros. They say they don't need to market or invest. Um, they are usually the same people that say they have no time in the day to get things done. So you got to think about that, you know, change your ways. It's definitely time. So I, I'm going to go into kind of wrapping this up uh, by investing in your client user experience from getting found through client loyalty. You can demand higher fees and optimize the time you spend with clients. I think these are huge elements and I hope you at minimum do the following. Attract more prospects to your website by optimizing it, building a better site, telling a story, a narrative, uh, set up a transparent digital storefront so you can actually do commerce and people can buy products. Streamline the client intake with digital workflows. Set up payments online, you get paid faster and create a client portal workspace for clients where they can have the convenience of getting information from you. We do uh, have some special offers. Um, I do uh, like to keep these informational. You'll notice that I'm not selling, selling, selling my product, but the reality is I've been talking about my product the entire time. This is what Counting per, uh, Works Pro is all about. We have uh, a software platform that helps automate uh, and deliver a lot of these experiences for your clients. So if you want to create a connected client experience, definitely reach out. Uh, if you are going to purchase from us, write down Web20. We will offer a 20% off discount uh, for the first three months of your subscription. Um, there are some uh, restrictions that apply. 
and you must be a new client or a new marketing service. Offer expires within 30 or 60 days, actually. Uh, so if you want to get started, please check out our website, accountingworkspro.com. You can click uh, on a free trial or click a demo and set up a meeting with one of our, our coaches, and they'll walk you through kind of what your practice is doing today, what you're trying to accomplish, and how you can have all the tools to sell your tax and accounting services online. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you have found this information valuable. Um, again, we're online. I have a podcast that you can, uh, uh, the Modern Marketing Podcast. You can find all this information at countingworkspro.com. If you have any questions, reach out to success at countingworks.com via email, and we'll be happy to respond to you. Again, thank you for uh, joining me, and I hope to uh, see you again in a future time. Thank you.